Well, good day. So, in today's video, we're going to uh, talk about uh, char cloth and uh, how I make mine. My first batch of char cloth that I used was a t-shirt. And what I would do would cut them all up into these little squares, real thin squares. It would consistently break apart very easily, as you can see here, very thin. It works, works great, but I wanted something a little different. I didn't want this here t-shirt anymore because it was just too thin. So what I decided to do was use denim jeans, 100% cotton, but I didn't want to do these small little squares, these little wafers. I want to try something a little different because even in here, you could see underneath, it's all broken up. Every, it's, this is what you get, all kinds of little pieces. Very brittle, very thin little pieces. I wanted something different. So what I decided on doing was eliminating the little squares and instead doing this. This here is a denim jeans cut into three and a quarter inch strips, roughly about uh, 18, 20 inches long, then rolled up and tied with another piece of denim just to keep it round. By doing this, you can tear off whatever you want. If you still want to use a square, that's fine. You can just unroll it. Do whatever you'd like. Cut off little pieces. Cut off little squares. But if you keep it nice and tight, it will not get brittle. It'll stay nice and firm. It keeps very well. But also, let's try something different. Let's take this, put it here. Now, this is why I prefer doing the roll over the wafers, the little, little squares. This is one reason why. We'll see if I can get this uh, to ignite right away. If not, I got an alternative way. But for now, let's give this a shot. Whoops. Well, you know what? Let's try an alternate way. The old faithful lighter. I'll give this another shot, but let's try the lighter. Okay. For the sake of the video, let's say that I ended up with a spark. And it hit right there in the middle. So by hitting right there in the middle, you get a nice little glow. Everything works good. You got all the time in the world. Cut a quarter inch off of here now. Just let it absorb the ignition. But if you blow on it, You can see, you get a, a cigar-like effect with a big, big heater on her. Now that will start any bird nest on fire, even if it's a little damp. Check that out. Now, in this video, I'm going to make four of these rolls 
and put them into my uh, fire kit. I personally prefer this method over using a t-shirt to make these little squares. I'd rather use a pair of denim jeans to make this and this will last a lot longer than one of these little wafers. Check that out. Now that will throw off a lot of heat. All right, so let's get to the video. Okay, to continue on with my uh, char cloth, I'm going to use a nice strip of denim jeans. That's a nice healthy strip. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut uh, two pieces, two strips, roughly three and a quarter inch wide. And then I'm going to roll it up into a nice roll and make uh, char cloth. The reason for that and the way I'm doing it is because uh, the other day, as you remember, I made some uh, charred punk wood. So what I'm going to do is in here I'm going to have charred punk wood. I'm going to have my chaga, a little bit of birch bark. I'll probably add some fat wood. And then uh, I'm going to add some char cloth. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a roll and it'll fit right in the middle. So my tin is roughly uh, three and three eighths. So if I make my rolls three and a quarter inch length, I'll be able to put one right in the middle, have my char cloth on this side, my uh, or punk wood on this side, char cloth on this side, and then have my um, chog on this side and probably put a little bit of fat wood. So we're going to continue on. We're going to first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut this into uh, three and a quarter inch strips. We're going to make two strips out of that. So, we'll take a measurement here, three and a quarter, three and a quarter, three and a quarter. Okay, now we'll just cut that. There it is there. Continue on with the end. The reason why I use uh, denim jeans, it's 100% uh, cotton. It's got a nice stiffness to it. I used uh, cotton t-shirts in that before, but I find the cotton t-shirts, it, it doesn't have a lot of structure. It's very flaky and very, it breaks too easy. Where once you uh, turn your denim jeans, which is 100% cotton into uh, char cloth, it's got a little bit more forgiveness to it. So when you do, break off a piece put it on your uh, on your shirt or your uh, flint and grab your striker it's gonna hold a little better and then you can easily flake off the ends to catch a spark a lot better I, I find t-shirts and stuff like that they're just a little too thin so I'm gonna do it this way here and it should turn out a lot better so right now we got the one strip here it's three and a quarter inches uh, wide I'll throw that aside, make another strip real quick. And the only reason why I'm measuring is because, like I said, my tin is only three and a quarter inch, three and three eighths wide. So I can't make it wider than that, it won't fit.
okay there's my two strips you know what I'll probably end up throwing that in there also but what I'm going to do now is I'll put everything aside and now instead of cutting them into little squares like I usually do this time I'm going to roll it into a nice nice tight roll okay now that I'm going to finish rolling these Make sure it's nice and tight. Okay, now that it's nice and tight, looks good. Don't want it to all come apart, so we're going to tie that off with a little scrap piece of uh, denim. Okay, so now that we're done uh, grabbing our strips of uh, denim, I rolled them up. I ended up uh, with four rolls, which is great. So now the reason why I made them uh, three and a quarter inches in length is so that it would fit into my tin. So the reason why I did it like this rather than doing the squares is I find the squares get a lot, lot more brittle, uh, harder to handle. When you take the the, um, the char cloth to put it on your chert, your flint, you strike it, I find it breaks apart a lot. Works great, but I find it breaks apart a lot. What I like to use is this. Once this is charred in your container, you take it out, put it on your board, use your knife, cut off a quarter inch of that, and look at the thickness of that. Look at that. Okay, so now you take a quarter inch of this, put it on your... Uh, your chert, strike that with a steel. When you get a spark on that, and then you start blowing on this, my friend, that's gonna glow like an end of a cigar. Then you take this, throw that in your bird's nest, and it'll be no time you're gonna blow that into a flame because that's gonna burn hot. So right now, I made four of them. I got my container, I'm gonna, uh, Store this uh, in something else, use this container, I'm going to char them rolls. So let's get that started. Okay, so to continue on uh, with the process of making uh, char cloth, I'm going to process uh, some wood for my firebox. So I'll start off, I'll use this, uh, this is a Condor Primitive Camp Knife designed by Matt Graham, 1095 steel. So I'll start off with that. I'll use my mallet, process some wood. Then I'm going to make some feather sticks and I'm going to use this uh, puko. This puko here comes from a small town of uh, Caloria. It's in uh, Finland. Hopefully I didn't uh, butcher that uh, name, but this is a beautiful knife. Look at that. The way it fits in your hand. Man, can't wait to make some feather sticks with that. So for now, I'm going to start uh, processing some wood. I'll use my mallet and start uh, doing a little baton. Oh, yeah, that's oh, man, that feels good. That, I love that feel. That's nice. Thanks, Grizz. I'm going to enjoy this. Nice trade. That feels great. That does feel nice.
I don't need all that, but just have the feel of the knife, so I'll process some more for another task. Just got to make sure it's small enough to fit in my uh, firebox. A little bit of fat wood in this piece. Okay, I think that's enough there to get me going to do what I have to do. That felt great. That's a nice knife. Okay, so let's try some feather sticking. Oh, that feels good in the hand. Grips nice. Nice big fat hand. I like that. Handle. <laughs> Not hand, handle. That was great. Should be enough. Yeah, that should be enough to get the firebox going. Throw in some birch bark, some fatwood, and that should work. Okay, I'll be back in a second. Okay, so now I got uh, I got some birch bark, some fatwood. I got uh, all my stuff ready to make a fire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my uh, my firebox. Got the ash pan. I love this thing. Just unfold it, let the middle fall through, just like that. Done. Put the ash pan in. Now that's complete. Okay, so let's build our fire. Lot of pencil head size small. Just throw that in. That should be good. A couple of sticks. Lots of fat wood on them. Okay, throw that in there.
Okay, just to show you, is like I shaved off a lot of fat wood. Like that's that's crazy. That's that's potent. Nice smell to it. Nice color. Nice amber. Has that nice sheen to it. We'll keep that for another uh, another fire. Hopefully the wind doesn't take all this away. A little bit of shavings. Some birch bark. Shavings. Now, let's sprinkle a little bit of magic. That one. There we go. Oh. Okay. Let's hit that with a ferro rod and uh, see what takes place. Let's reach in, grab the ferro rod, alright, let's get this thing going. There it is. Take too much. That's fat wood, eh? <laughs> Gotta love it. Wind changed. Get rid of the blades. Wow, that smells good. Don't need these now. Had to use them. Had to use them just to hold down everything because it was so windy. Yeah, so what I'll do is uh, I got the, my three rolls in here. I kept one roll aside just to show you the comparison. But what I'll do is I'll char these off and uh, we'll see how it looks. Okay, so all the small stuff uh, burnt down. Now I got just the big stuff in here. So I think it's time to uh, put on my uh, tin, start charring that cloth. I did this time uh, put a small hole right in the lid and that's for me for a visual because I couldn't see the uh, smoke or the flames coming out of it the last time I did the punk wood. So this time I put a uh, small hole there just so I could see the flame and the smoke and know when it's uh, completely done but for now let's try this out okay she's on there and we'll see what happens so anyways yeah like i was talking earlier this here knife right here is the uh Tulapuko. It's from Finland. Small little town of uh, Glory. I love this knife. 
I love the design. But this handle, like, check that out. That is sweet. It's a high carbon steel. It doesn't mention uh, uh, the brand. It's, it doesn't mention whether it's 1095 or whatever. Like I said, nice birch handle. Reindeer antler pommel. Rat tail. It is a large fat hand. Fat handle. <laughs> I keep saying fat hands. It's a, got a nice swell on it there, but man, that, that feels nice in your hand. I just love the feel of that. I love the looks of it and the feel. It's going to take some getting used to, but it's beautiful. Now that's going to be on my belt. Nice, nice knife. Also, another new one is the uh, Condor Primitive uh, Camp Knife. Very nice. El Salvador. Very nice knife. Love that handle. Never seen a shape like that on any other knife. Canvas Mercado handles. The, the, no hot spots. There's no edges. It's, it's, it's round. It's contoured here. Nice and round. That, that's, that's a beautiful knife right there. 1095. Yeah. That I like. Again, Matt Graham design. Very nice knife. Like the Luco uh, family there, right? Very nice. I wonder, 90 degree spine? Let's check that out. Put my striker back. Oh, yeah. I should have used that instead of my other striker. But I don't usually like using uh, my knives for that. That's nice. Let's see about the other one there. Let's check this out. Nope. But that's okay. I won't be using that. Uh, I'll be using my striker. But yeah, that, that definitely... Definitely covers the bases there. But that's that's a sweet knife. Okay. So we'll give the uh, the tin time to heat up pretty good. I see the little flame coming out of the hole, which is good. Now I can keep an eye on it. Okay, we're gonna let it uh, let it go and I'll get right back to you once uh, we're close to the end. It makes a nice gas and right now you can see right there the gas is uh, coming out of the uh, vent hole. Once that's done, no more smoke, no more gas coming out. I'll remove the tin, let it cool and then once it's cool to the touch we'll take a look at it. Okay, so right now I no longer see any smoke or any uh, flame coming out of the center hole. So let's take it out, let it cool, and uh, see what the outcome is. Okay, we'll just let it cool. I'll stock this up, because I'm gonna make some more uh, punk wood, uh, charred punk wood, and I got still one more roll of char cloth to do. So for now, Let's just get some more coals. So now we'll just let it cool to the touch. And uh, I'll get back to you. Okay. Had time to uh, make myself a tea. Let it cool down. It's warm. 
but I can still handle it with my bare hands. So it's cooled down quite a bit. Okay, let's see what it looks like. Well, there you go. There's my rolls of char cloth. And remember, this is what I started out with. Three and a quarter inches. Just enough to fit in the tin. And that's what she shrank down to. So I think that was a success. Got to cool down some more. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish charring off my last roll and maybe a little bit of punk wood. And we'll add it to my uh, fire starting kit. And it'll be well established and uh, can help me out in uh, any type of situation. So for now, I'll let that burn down a little bit. Enjoy my tea and I'll get right back to you. Okay, now it's time to finish off uh, my last roll. So this will be my fourth roll. Put that in the middle. And we'll break off some punk wood. Put a couple pieces. all right so now i got some uh, punk wood my last roll of uh, char cloth we'll put the lid on throw her in the fire and let her do her thing turned out very good today. The wind was crazy. Lots of wind. But at least I'm out. Even though we're still under uh, stay at home order. At least I'm doing something out in the yard. And uh, being productive. That's the main thing. And uh, just enjoying the outdoors. So We'll let that burn off and then uh, I'll bring you back. We'll open her up. We'll check out my last roll, a little bit of punk wood, put my kit together and uh, we'll see uh, where it goes from there. See you in a bit. Okay, so right now I don't see no more flames or smoke coming out of that little pinhole. So I think it's safe to say time to extract the container. All right. Okay, we're gonna let that cool and we're gonna take a look inside and that should end the project for today. That'll give us charred uh, cloth made out of uh, cotton, 100%, and uh, denim jeans rolled into tubes and charred uh, punk wood. Okay, be right back. Okay, so stove still a little warm. I emptied the stove, so now it's got to cool down. But this is cool to the touch. So let's see what happens. Ah, oh, there you go. Again. We have another roll of char cloth and a little bit of punk wood. So now between 
all these here rolled. I got an extra one. Probably give that to my grandson or my uh, son. So we got some punk wood and some char cloth. So in there, I'll have uh, some fatwood sticks, which are saturated with, just saturated. Nice smell to it. So I'll have that in there, along with uh, some chaga and some old man's beard. My flint, my steel, can't ask for better. So thanks for watching, and uh, you guys take care now, and I hope you enjoyed. Bye now.